Casting Your Own Metal Moulding Box Sides, Part 4. Because of the intimate detail with which I wish to show this process, Part 4 became a little long, so I've split it into two bits. Well, the time has come when we're going to start making the sides for real. Well, the first thing I need to do is get a little set up here, so I'll just... Uh, I'll just put this about where we want it. No, that doesn't look too bad. That's about right. I'll just mark that. Now I've got a bit of a line to guide me. And we'll now place the, uh, the two odd side pieces. Now, I've opened up the holes here to take, uh, to properly take a nail. That's about a two mil drill I ran through there, uh, or a little bit less than that. Um, one thing about nails, when they put the square tip on them, it inevitably damages the nail, and you'll find it won't fit in the hole. So what you have to do is just very quickly run that against a grindstone or something, just to smooth the end up so that it will now fit in the hole. Now, we just sit these... Ah, come on. Right. We sit these up against the line I marked, so that looks like about it, and about... evenly from each end. Whilst... holding everything down against the board and then we just give these a quick tap all right take these off find the holes drive the nail in a bit further ah ha. Don't have to be too far. Remember, you're going to have to pull them out later. Sooner or later, you can't leave nails in your baseboards. Okay. Now, cut these off because we don't want them anywhere near that long. Ah, dear, dear. In fact, we don't want them very long at all, really. Even that's probably a bit too long. <laughs> Get rid of those nasty little bits. Don't want them in the sand. Now, by cutting them like that, I will have uh, damaged the, the roundness of the, the nail, and it may not go in the uh, plastic, so I'll just run around a with a Dremel. I guess if you don't have a, a Dremel, use a file. So now let's see whether we're going to fit. There we go. That's one. Two. Do we fit here? Nice. That's pretty good. We are now ready to make our first mould. And because of these red odd side pieces, we do not have to cut the mould down and it's all going to be, <laughs> I hope, <laughs> nice and easy. A bit of part as usual. Yeah, I didn't get them on dead straight, but I don't think it's going to matter much. That sort of looks close enough to me. Sieve sand, only uh, backing sand. I'm not wasting facing sand on this. Feels a little damp, that sand, to be honest, but let's see how it goes. <laughs> now, just a little bit of a tap with the fingers through that area between the uh, 
uh, pin lugs because that's an area that won't ram very well. A bit more there to just firm it up over the lugs themselves. And now we can start ramming for proper and away we go. Strike it off. It does feel a bit wet that sand, it's a little worrying, I'd rather it a little drier. Now, oh, try and get a vent down in between those pin lugs. I think it's about there. That feels good, it's about all I need. Just that one vent, because that'll be a bit of a steam trap with my fine sand. Flicker over. Delicately remove the baseboard and obviously the odd side pieces. There we go. We were a little bit high because uh, the odd side pieces are a little bit long for this box, but that'll be alright. Just smooth that up a bit with my hands. Get some air here. A little bit of part on this, I think. Now, uh, with a brush, we'll just sweep here where the um, sand and the pattern meet, where the odd side was, because it's a little, there's a little bit of a, an edge there. It's got rid of it. Find a, a feeder, which we'll put there, push it down a little bit, box, okay, and a sprue, about there I think, and we should be away again. Still feels a bit wet that sand. I might try the other barrel, it might be a little uh, drier, I think. Wobble and pull the feeder former. Twist and pull the sprue former. little bit of part down each one, blow it round, just round that sun up a bit. Got a pouring basin here. Come on, you're supposed to come out. <laughs> That's better. mistake a lot of people seem to make when they're doing this, cutting this basin, is that they they leave the ridge too high. It's only supposed to be five to ten millimetres off the bottom of the basin. People seem to be in the habit of making it five or ten millimetres off the top of the basin and then they wonder why it doesn't work right. Okay. What is absolutely critical with this 
is that there is a good generous radius between the ridge and the sprue. That's not too bad for a, someone who's a bit out of practice. Okay, now let's see if we can get this apart. Get the sand out of the way. unknown reason I picked up a box that's pinned across the short distance which isn't my favorite way of doing things I far prefer the pins to be across the length of the box but it shouldn't be too bad I hope <coughs> we'll see what happens come on darling up you come and there we go that doesn't look too bad to me a little bit of part on that <coughs> we'll just smooth out the base of the sprue smooth out the base of the feeder blow them both out <coughs> That's that half done. Now, of course, we have to uh, uh, <coughs> cut a runner. Just take that to there. Well, <coughs> we've actually got to cut that right through, of course, haven't we? Silly me. Now, of course, can we get it out? Always the question. Just a little bit, a little bit sideways first, backwards and forwards. You don't want too much. Ooh, that's yeah, that's easy. All right. Now, get something to give me a guide. Right, that's about right. Find a nice pointy nail, screw rather. This one's looking good. If we can get it in there. It's a question here of, of whether I should put a screw in either end or just one in the middle. I prefer to lift <coughs> with just the one screw if I can. If you've got two, your hands can sort of fight each other a bit. It's uh, better quite often just to do this and just hold it against that bit of steel and up we come. There we go. Remove the bit of steel. A little bit apart. Take the sharp edge off that gate there. And what have we got? How do we look? Trial close here. Okay. 
Yeah, there's certainly some loose stuff when you do that. And that's one.